All right. So, um, hi everyone. Thanks for coming to um, today's lecture. And <clears throat> sorry, I'm a, a little bit laughing my voice, but hopefully it will not affect too much on the on the lecturing. All right. So um, today we are going to talk about the uh, integration and the integration of sensing and control. And as I mentioned before, the best case. The ideal case for this combination of sensing and control is the visual servering. So today we are going to introduce the very traditional visual servering problem and the solution. Then uh, there will be other there will be other visual serving solutions. There will be a lot of um, a lot of like uh, improvements or changes of the uh, visual serving solutions. But the basic idea is there. The basic idea is the same. And I, I believe after you learn the video servering method, then you may have the, a better idea about how to use the other, the other sensors to, op, to, op, to obtain the information and use the information in your uh, closed loop control. All right, so um, the, this is uh, what we are going to talk about. Then uh, before we start, um, before we start to introduce the video serving, so I'd like to um, I'd like you to have a discussion, or maybe it's hard to have a discussion, but um, you can think about the question that if I have a fetch robot. So some of the students that you are um, uh, you're doing some projects about fetch robots, right? So suppose we have this fetch robot. We have this fetch robot, and I have a six joints arm and a gripper as well. And I have a head, and on the head, I have an RGB camera. Then I'd like to I'd like to make the robot to have some sensing and control <coughs> control abilities to pick up the a box on the table. Then, how to control the fetch robot to, to do that? Now, my, my control means autonomous, not the, um, uh, not the remote control, right? So how to control the robot to pick up the box on the table? Then uh, that's your first activity. So think about this question with five minutes, and then uh, you can post your answer to the, uh, to the chart. You can post on it to the chat. All right, so think about that. Suppose you have the fetch robot and you want to control the arm, you control the manufacturer to pick up a box. So how to control that? How to do that?
Yeah, I got the answer from James. Um, uh, it's a very good answer. So, um, uh, says it used the camera to find the relative location of the N factor and the box. And then they used uh, inverse kinematics to get the joint positions or joint angles for, uh, for where the N factor should move for picking, uh, for picking up the, the box. Thanks a lot. That's a very good answer. Okay, so um, let's, um, let's look at it together. The first thing is, the first thing is, if you, for example, if you are the robot, you close your eye, and then you don't know where the box is, right? So you can't, you can't just pick up, it just can't, you can't just pick up the, the box without using any other external information, right? So if you know where the box is and you know the relative, uh, the relative pose between the, the robot pose and the robot, robot base and the, um, and, and the box, then that is hard coding. It's not control, right? So, which means we need some information. If we, if, if we want to pick up a box or a mouse, uh, a mouse on, the, on, the, on the table, then we have to look at it. We know where it is, we can just go, we can pick it up, right? And in the robot, in the robot case, the easiest way to get this information is the camera. It's similar to our eyes. It's like we can use the camera to, to detect the box. Right, and again, as uh, James mentioned, so we can use the camera to find the relative location, the relative location between the um, between the end factor or the end the box, or or if we know if we know the relative pose, or if we know the end factor. Sorry, I'm getting some other students in. All right, so if we know that we, we always know the location of an, an effector in the robot base corner frame, and also we know the relative pose between the eye and the robot, ba the robot base, then we only need to know what's the, what's the relative pose or what's the relative location from the box to the camera. Then we can get both the position of the end vector and also the position of the box in the robot base corner frame. Then we can control the end vector, right? So we can control the end vector to pick it up. All right. So this is a way about video serving, but video serving is a bit more than that. It's a, a little bit more than that. Let me explain why. Because um, during the um, during the control. If you use the camera, if you use the camera to get the, the to detect the location of the box, then then this location you calculate from the camera it contains error. If you just do a C and go, it will contain it will contain error. Then which means your control will have some problem if the error is quite large. It may not be able to pick it up. So video serving is some kind of like online doing this uh, uh, this this control process, which means uh, it's not a see and go or see and pick. It's like it's online seeing the changes of information and online control doing online providing the feedback to the control and also to make the control adjust control doing you move your end factor to pick it up. It's all the way. So the control is like all the way instead of a, a, a C and pick, right? So that is a very traditional, very traditional problem about the, the video serving. And then today we are going to introduce that thing. Um, it's a very good answer for, for the activity one. All right, so uh, wait a minute. Then um, if you remember, I introduced two, two videos, two examples about video serving in the first lecture. So this one is done by, uh, by Judge Attack. This is a very traditional video serving problem. Yeah. If you remember that Swiss Ranger is super expensive before, before Kinect.
this is another kind of video serving. But it's the basic idea is also a bit video serving, but setups are a bit different. Yeah, so this is uh, one of the example I um, I show you, show you in the first very first lecture, and uh, this is the second example I also showed in the first lecture, which is about inserting a needle, inserting a needle by um, by a robot, by a surgical robot. Then um, they use the ultrasound to do, to do this video serving. So for this, with it's a pure, it's a pure insertion without any video serving control. Then because of the soft tissue, it will deform. Then it will not directly uh, get into the the target blue, uh, sorry, target uh, green cross, right? But with the video serving, as you can see, so it's not a see and go problem, but it's online it online adjust the direction when the needle is inserting, then it will reach the target. It's quite accurate, right? All right, so um, that, uh, those are two examples I, I've shown you uh, in the very beginning of this subject. Then uh, may I ask you, may I ask you one quick question? So uh, there are two examples of the video serving, of the video serving um, in the two videos, right? Then uh, what's, what are the differences between them? Are they exactly the same thing or from the control point of view, so, or video serving point of view? What are the differences? I think I got an answer, wait a minute. Yes. Uh, that's a very, that's a very um, correct answer from, <clears throat> from Asia. So um, the previous one, for this one from Georgia Tech, uh, from Georgia Tech, you can see the camera is on the hand. The camera is on the hand, right? So that is one of the, uh, This is one of the very traditional ones of the camera. So the camera is on the hand. And the other one for this uh, surgical case, the camera is a global camera. So the, the, uh, the camera is not on the hand, but, but at a global fixed position. And we still do this kind of video serving control. All right, so that is, um, that is the main difference between the two applications. And I'm going to show, I will show you one of the case, but uh, the other case will be will be similar. And then uh, for different cases, we'll have different HANA calibration. I, I, I'm going to uh, talk about it uh, at, in the, at the very end of this lecture. All right, so after you think about the act question in activity one and also the two examples in the video, so what is the video serving? What is the video serving? The video serving is the region system operates in the in the closed control loop. Closed control loop. So, which means if you have a uh, robot control system, so it's a robot system, and you want to control the robot arm or robot and effector, and you have your controller, then uh, if you want to control that, you need to have the feedback, right? And the region system. The region system will be the feedback. 
and from the region, you can get the um, image um, feature extraction from the video or from the camera. Then you can get some information, for example, the post is mission or something else. Uh, here we are not uh, directly, the traditional video serving do not directly estimate the post, but um, it will provide similar things to directly get the control, which is the linear and angular velocity of the end factor. All right, and then this information from the, uh, the, the image will be a feedback to your control and to adjust your control, right? And it has better accuracy than the look and move as what I mentioned before. If you just look and move, there will be error. But the visual serving system is online system. It adjusting the control all the way from the starting point to getting the object. All right, so that's, it's a, it has the, the visual serving has a better accuracy than the look and move system. All right, so because the visual serving is mainly using the vision, the vision to do the feedback control. So here, I um, let's give a brief introduction about what kind of like machine vision techniques or vision sensors that we can use, and we can use it, uh, use them in the uh, in, in the video serving. At least some of the sensors that they might, there will be more than that. So the fir first one is a single camera, a mono camera, it's called a single perspective camera. It's just a normal camera that we always use. And we also introduced the, uh, the projection when we introduced the, uh, the camera, the mono camera, right? So you have a 3D point and you want to project it onto the image, then, then you can calculate where that point is projected on the, on the image. Right, so which means if you have a 3D point capital X, and then you can calculate the small x on the image, which is the 2D location on the image. And we have to talk about different cases. If you don't remember, please go back to, um, uh, to, to the lecture that we introduced a single camera. All right, then uh, multi-spectral cameras. For example, if the camera moves or if you have a stereo camera, which means you have two cameras, then um, uh, we introduced why we need, uh, we, we want to have multiple cameras, for example, 2D, uh, sorry, stereo cameras, is because we can directly get the depth, but from a single camera, we can't, right? And if you remember why we can get the, um, we can directly get the depth information from, from the stereo camera is, if we can see the only consider a single camera, then if we have a projected point on image, for example, if you have a phone on your image, then it doesn't mean you know the 3D location of your phone, right? Because you only have the information that your phone is on, the, on, on this ray, is on this ray, right? But you do know the depths which means you don't know which location your phone really is on that ray, right? But if we have a second image, second camera, and then on that camera, we also have your phone projected here, then which means the phone on the second image will be on some direction along this ray, right? And then you have two rays, then the intersection, will be the real 3D location of the of your phone. Right. Then uh, this is the basic idea about why we can why we can recover the depths from the stereo camera. And we also introduced um, uh, the triangulation if you remember. So this is the triangulation. Triangulation means if you have if you have a stereo camera you have two images and then um, they both have the projection from a corresponding same same corresponding 3D point, then you can calculate the 3D location, right? So this is the stereo camera. I will introduce a little bit later about why depth is quite important. Why depth is quite important because in the traditional one, we need a traditional solution of the video serving, then we need to have assumption on the depth. All right, I'll, I'll show you a little bit later. Then a uh, laser scanner. 
a laser scanner is not really a um, a uh, image sensor, but um, it is used a lot to uh, to the video serving or the feedback control. Why we use it a lot because um, because it it can directly get the depths, and also it can get um, get a very very large range of the field view, right? Some some of them. Uh, 2D laser that can get um, 270 degrees uh, reading, and for for some 3D 3D lidar which used in the autonomous driving, it can get 360 degrees, and then with the 3D ones with um, with on the on the vertical direction it has multiple multiple lines, right? And also a best a very best a very good uh, property of the um, uh, of the laser is it can directly get the depth and the depth is quite accurate. So for example, in this case, this is the pump cloud. This is the pump cloud directly get from the laser scanner. As you can see, it can, from laser scanner, it can get the shape of the object that you want to pick up, for example. And also it can directly get the surrounding environment, the pump cloud of the surrounding environment as well, which is really, which is really really easy for the uh, video serving that um, it can it can uh, segment it can it can segment the object out and estimate the pose of the the shape and pose of the of the object and then apply the video serving because the depth information is quite accurate as well. All right, so that is the laser scanner. Then. Um, Another region sensor which is quite easy, which is quite um, uh, used in the video serving is omnidirectional camera. Omnidirectional camera. The um, it is similar to, uh, to 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 the meaning of the um, of the name. So the omnidirectional camera it can get 360 degrees field of view. Sometimes it's uh, if a very large fish eye. Um, lens or sometimes it use um, a mirror to get a 360 field of view, 360 degree field of view. All right, so for example, in this case, so it used a mirror on the camera, then the, ca the camera look at that mirror and that mirror will have a 360 degree reading. And then after a proper, after a proper, uh, calibration, then you can get an image, something like that. You can recover the 360 information from this image to this one. But the thing is, because it is a 360 one, 360 degree, and as you can see, the distortion on the image, the distortion on the image is quite large. So for this kind of camera, the calibration, the calibration method is quite different from what we have for the normal perspective camera. And there are some uh, methods and some toolbox to calibrate this kind of camera. But even with that, the calibration will not be that accurate. So which means the distortion is too large, then which means the distortion is too large, then which means the uh, 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 your 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 un undistorted or after the calibration, the calibration parameter will not be that accurate. For example, in this case, in this case, if you can see, the the letters on the side are larger than the letters in the middle, even after the distortion and distortion. But the letters are the same in real, right? So that is the the bad thing for the only omnidirectional camera. But good thing is it can provide a 360, 360 degree, sorry, 360 degree uh, of the field of view, which means if you want to check the object everywhere in the room or surrounding you, then that is the best option. For example, in this case, they, uh, they, 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 write, they run a control method on the, uh, uh, on the robot base and they use omnidirectional camera to follow to follow this to follow the people right and they use omnidirectional camera and even the um, 
even the the people, even the person moves with quite large with quite large error, sorry, with quite large angle, then it still can detect the person, right? But for a normal for a normal camera, suppose if you if you use RGB camera, it only has around seventy or seventy five um, degree of freedom. Sorry, uh, degrees of field of view. Which means if you move a little a little bit far, a little bit far on the on the offside side, then um, on the side, then which means you can't, the camera cannot see the uh, see the person anymore. Then it will lose the checking. You lost the checking, right? So um, in this case, that's the oval directional camera. It can works quite well if it, if we want to get a more robust um, checking and uh, following control, right? Um, so I I worked at Imperial College before. So if you if you know the uh, the Dyson the Dyson Vulcan the Dyson Vulcan robot, it has the it has the mapping and localization function, right? And in that, um, that technique is developed by a uh, professor, Andrew Davidson uh, at Imperial College. Uh, I talked to them before, I talked to them when I was there about technique. And um, that, the, that technique for the Dyson Vulcan, Vulcan robot is developed by Andrew Davidson at, at Imperial. And what they used with sensor is about omnidirectional camera as well. So they use the omnidirectional camera as well. And then they, because the omnidirectional camera, it can see the complete ceiling together with the surrounding walls. And they use those, the features on those to do the localization. This is what it did for the very famous, very famous um, Dyson, uh, Dyson uh, Robert Wacken. All right, so that is omnidirectional camera. Then um, structural light sensors. I think uh, we've introduced it um, before. So the structural light um, is um, initially is a very large um, uh, equipment, but uh, now uh, it can it can be integrated in the camera-like sensor, right? Like uh, the first version of the Kinect, and also a lot of like a lot of versions, uh, a lot of initial versions of the uh, RGBD sensors, and the um, the principle is uh, we've introduced it already, right? So it, there's a projector and there is a receiver. And um, when they project some kind of like certain pattern on the object, then the receiver will see, will receive the difference of the, of the, um, of the pattern which projected on different objects. Then they can calculate the shape or the depth of the, of the image. Right, so that's the structural light sensor, and that also can be used in the in the visual survey. Then, um, by saying that many, uh, those many um, uh, uh, we, uh, machine vision sensors, then the most commonly used one is the camera, is the camera or single camera, because it's cheap and it's really really commonly used. So that's review. Let's have a review about the projection of the projection of the camera. And then we will use that information in the visual serving, in the visual serving solution. All right. So um, if you remember, we introduced it before. For a single, for a single camera, or we call it a single wheel geometry, the camera obeys the pinhole model. The projection obeys the pinhole model. So which means, which means suppose he, this is the optical center, the optical center of your lens. Then I uh, suppose P is your 3D point, and then that point will be projected on here to the image. That's a pinhole model, that's a pinhole model. And for the pinhole model, we've introduced a very simple case first, which is the central projection with the principal point of that, with the principal point of that. Right. So the central projection with principal offset is the case that if you have a 3D point, if you have a 3D point in the camera corner frame, then how to calculate this projection? All right. And today we are going to introduce the projection in the matrix format. And then it's quite easy for you to 
to into to to implement into uh, into the coding into MATLAB or into C or C plus plus. All right. So suppose you have an X Y Z, which is the three D, which is the three D position of the feature of a point. Then you first make a homogeneous three D point by adding one at last to make it a four by one vector. And then this is the uh, relationship between central projection and the principal point of the center. And the, um, the F is the, is the focal lens and the PXPY is the, uh, co are the coordinates of the, um, uh, of the principal point, if you remember. And then, and then we, we can rewrite it into a matrix format like that. So, and again, this, X cam is the 3D, is the homogeneous 3D point in the camera corner frame, which is that. It's X, Y, Z, and one. And the K is, we call it the camera calibration matrix or camera intrinsic matrix, which is this one. F is the, is the focal lens and P, X, P, Y is the principal point. And here is one and all the others are zero, right? And this matrix is a three by four matrix, is a three by four matrix. The first three by three is an identity matrix. Identity matrix means it's one, one, one on the diagonal and zero on the block, on the off diagonal. That is, this matrix is for I and this zero is a three by one zero matrix, uh, zero, zero matrix, then which means this matrix together, this matrix together is a one, 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 zero, 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 and zero, zero, zero. So this is a three. So this is a three by four matrix of this matrix, of this matrix, this matrix. And suppose you know the 3D location of the feature, which is X, Y, Z, you add one here to get this X cam. Then you know what is K, right? Because you know focal lens and principal point and you know this matrix, which is that. Then you can calculate your small X, but your small X, but your small X, suppose your small X, your small x is still a three by one matrix, which is small x, small y, and small z, something like that. And then you, you, you need to convert it from homogeneous into unhomogeneous. Then it's x divided by z, and v is y divided by z. All right, so after you get the small x, that is homogeneous 2D point, you want to convert it into U and V, then what you want to do is you use the first element of small x divided by the last one, the third one, then you get U. Then the second element of small x divided by the third one, the last one, then you get uh, the V, right? So that is the central projection with the principal point offset. And this projection only applies if the 3D point is in the camera corner frame. It's in the camera corner frame, right? Then let's introduce a more, a more traditional case, so which means if your camera, if your camera is on, uh, on the end factor, on the robot arm, or if your camera is on a moving robot. But in this case, the 3D point, the 3D point is in a different, is in the different coordinate compared to the camera, compared to the camera. So you have a world corner frame and you have a camera corner frame. And then you have a 3D point in the world corner frame, then how you can calculate this projection onto the uh, camera image. That is a more general case, excuse me. All right, so what we can do is, what we can do is, it's quite simple, right? So suppose we have the camera pose already, which is R, that is a uh, three by three rotation matrix. 
and C, which is the camera center, or we call it the translation of the camera pose. It's, they are the same thing, right? So the the uh, the easiest way is we use the camera pose to transform the three D points from the camera from the global corner frame to the camera corner frame. Then we have X cam. Then we have X cam. Then we can use then we can use the same method we have in the central projection with the principal model set, right? So if you have a 3D point that is in the global corner frame, and then you want to transform, so you want to get projection on the image, and also you have the, the 3D pose, the rotation and translation, which, which is the pose of the camera, so what you can do is you can first do a transformation to transform the 3D point from the global corner frame to the um, to the camera corner frame. Then you have X cam. After you have X cam, then you can use this equation. You can use the same equation as as um, introduced in the central projection with the principal of set. Right, and there are two ways of uh, of doing this transformation. One is in homogeneous way. For the inhomogeneous way, this 3D point in the global corner frame is three by one. And the camera location or the camera translation is three by one as well. And you use this equation, so X minus C, and then times a rotation matrix of the camera, which is three by three, then you have X cam. But this X cam is three by one. It's three by one. That is inhomogeneous. It's inhomogeneous, and also we can use a homogeneous way, homogeneous way, and we can combine this homogeneous way together to the uh, projection to the matrix format of projection. So what we can do is suppose this this is your this is your um, homogeneous coordinate of the three D point which is X, Y, Z, and you add one here. And you use this transformation matrix, which is R minus R times C, zero and one, and that is a four by four matrix. Four by four matrix, because this is a three by three. It's a three by one. And this is a one by three. And this is a one by one scalar. This is one by one. So that's a four by four matrix. Then you use this homogeneous point, 3D point times this transformation matrix, then you have X cam. And this cam, this X cam is four by one, which is also homogeneous. Then you can use it directly, directly to here, directly to here. All right, so this is the uh, transformation. So if you have a general case, which means your 3D point you want to project it is in the global corner frame, then the first thing is you need to transform it from the global corner frame to the camera corner frame by using the camera pose. And this is the way about how to do it. Then after that, then after that, you can combine, you can combine the transmission together together with the, sorry, <clears throat> you can combine the transformation together with the central projection with the principal model of that, right? So the first step is, the first step is you get, um, you need to get if, if, the, um, if the, the, the 3D point is in the camera corner frame or not, right? If it is not, if the camera, if the if the coordinate of the three D point is different from your camera, then the first thing is you get your homogeneous transition of that point, and then and then transform that point into the camera corner frame by using the transformation matrix, which from which is from the camera pose, and then use the central projection with the principal offset, or we can combine them together, combine the matrix format together. To get a uh, to get a more general case, to get a more general case. For example, this is the central projection with the principal offset uh, matrix format, right? And then because this is X cam, we replace X cam 
by using the x, which is a four by one, and times a transform transformation matrix, which is t, right? All right. And then we combine them together, we have this equation. This is much simpler, right? This is much simpler. And then uh, if you want to write your code, you just you just need to write this. It's much simple. It's a much simpler. It's much simple. You can use. Then the K is the calibration matrix, which is three by three. We introduced before, and uh, R is the rotation matrix, which is three by three. It is given as the rotation matrix of the camera pose, and um, and here it's like similar. This is also a three by four matrix. Then I'm writing it. I'm writing it to here. An I is I is the three by three. I is the three by three identity matrix, which is one, one, and one, and zero, 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 zero. And the very last, the very last column very last column is a three by one vector. That is the minus camera center or minus translation. So we can see that is X, C, Y, C, and Z, C. And don't forget, it's a minus. All right. So this is that, that matrix is a three by four matrix. And this X, is also a four by one homogeneous, four by one four homogeneous 3D point in the global corner frame. All right, so until now, until now, this is the standard formulation of the camera projection. If you find some papers or find some books introducing that, they always use this matrix matrix formulation. That's the standard formulation of the general case of the camera projection. And also you can see, we can see this is the 3D point X and this is the 2D point small X. And between them is a function, sorry, it is a matrix, which is a three by four. This P matrix is this matrix, which is three by four. And we called it camera perspective or camera projection matrix. Camera projection matrix. And that P is equal to this. All right, so that is a recall about the, uh, uh, the camera projection and also for a general case, how to formulate it, how to derive it to a um, matrix format. Wait a minute. Yes, so R is the rotation matrix of the camera, of the camera, uh, of the camera pose. So for example, if you have a global pose, you have a global pose here, and you have a camera like this, right? This camera can have a pose corresponding to the, uh, to the global corner frame. And that pose includes a rotation matrix R, which is three by three, and also its, lo its location, its, its camera center, uh, uh, camera center with respect to the uh, global pose as well, which is C, or sometimes we call it translation, translation of the camera pose. All right, so this R and C or R and T are, is the camera pose, which is here with respect to the global one. All right. Okay, cool. So uh, if everything's fine, if everything's fine, then um, that's, um, so th this trend I've introduced before, right? So uh, we, if we have a global, if we have a point, 3D point, a global corner frame, we need first transformation and then do the projection and then convert it into pixel, uh, into UV. And you can combine all of them together by only use, by only use this, by only use this equation. And don't forget both small X and capital X here, they are, um, uh, they are in homo they are in homogeneous position. So which means you get when you get a small x that is three by one, but it's a 2D point. And how to convert it into a normal 2D UV, which is the first element of small x divided by the last one. 
and the second element divided by the, the last element, and then you can get the UV. All right. So, um, and also, if you remember, we introduced um, we introduced after the uh, uh, after the uh, the quiz one, right? So when you do the camera calibration, then you find then you find the f x and x y. You have two value two values of the of the camera lens, uh, camera focal lens. But why they're focal? But why they they are different is because is because this focal lens is this focal lens in is in the metric of the pixels right and the fx and xy are the focal lens in the matrix or in the metric of pixels on the x direction or the y direction right then which means if your pixel is not square is not perfectly square then which means your x your fx and xy are different but normally, normally you will not get a uh, exactly f and f x and f y. They are exactly the same. Normally, you can or can't get that because the uh, the manufacturing of the sensors, the the pixel are not exact, are not exactly square. That's the thing. But they can't, they can't be, they can't be too different. So when you do the calibration, for most of the cases, you will have different numbers of x, f x and x y, but they are nearly the same. They are not. That different, so that is uh, normally uh, in the correct calibration because it's it is not perfect square but it's square roughly square. All right, so um, if everything is fine for the general case of this calibration, sorry, this uh, projection, then I'd like to to take this um, to practice on this activity. So this activity is to use the general the general formulation of the projection to get the image point UV. So you can you can calculate it by hand or you can calculate it by using MATLAB or C or other coding um, uh, sorry <coughs> coding uh, <coughs> coding software set. so they're all fine but um, try to try to calculate this image point this image point in this general case by using the uh, uh, by using this by using this general formulation of the projection. All right. So in active two, activity two, we have a camera which the image resolution is 800 by 800, and the principal point is in, is the center. So which means the principal point is 400, 400. All right. And the focal lens is 400, 400 as well. And the camera pose, the camera pose, the rotation angles are zero, zero, zero. Then which means the rotation matrix is an identity matrix, which is a three by three identity matrix. Matrix, uh, sorry, three by three identity matrix. I introduced it before. So if there's no rotation, if there's no rotation, then rotation angles will be zero, but the rotation matrix will be three by three identity matrix. Which means identity matrix means on the diagonal they are one, off diagonal they are zero, and the translation of the camera pose is 10, 20, and 2. So this P equal to the C in the uh, uh, in the sorry <coughs> uh, in the formulation. All right. And then there's a 3D point 25, 50, and 80. And that is in the global corner frame. That is not in the camera corner frame. And then please calculate U and V. All right. So um, uh, here, I want to say that um, if you have a similar question in your final exam or in the future, then the first thing for you is to check if this 3D point, if this 3D point is in the global corner frame or the camera corner frame, right? So if it is in the global corner frame, then you can use the general case. If it's in the camera corner frame, then you can you can use both. But you, but you can use the camera project, central projection with the principal offset. Or you can use the general case. You can use the general case, but make rotation as zero, then which means rotation matrix is identity. And also the translation, the translation, uh, the translation vector is zero, zero, zero as well. And then you can see after you apply to apply those two onto the general case, then you can directly get 
the um, uh, the formulation of the uh, central projection of the Prince model set. All right. So okay. So ten minutes. Write a code, or um, uh, or you can calculate by hand. Both both are fine. To call to do this calculation to try to find the uh, the image projection point U and V. All right. So ten minutes on that. Thanks.
All right, so uh, let's uh, look at the getter. So uh, suppose I'm using MATLAB to write a code to do this kind of projection, right? So uh, what I want to do is, um, uh, first, I need to know what is K. What is K? What is our K, right? So for our K, it is 400, that's the focal length, and zero, and 400, that's the first principal point, right? And um, the after one is zero, then uh, 400, then 400. That's the second line, as the zero, zero, and one, right? So this is our K. This is our K, so which means it's a three by three matrix. And here is focal length, focal length, principal point, post principal point. The others are zero, 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 and the three, the three, three, one is one, right? So that is the K. And then, what is our R? Our R is the uh, is the is the identity matrix, right? The identity matrix. And and what is our T? Our called C. What is that? So C is a column vector, which is ten. Sorry, column vector, twenty and two. Right. That is our C. And um, what else? And yes, and our capital X. Our capital X, that is a, um, that is a homogeneous 3D point, then which means it's 25, is uh, it's column vector, and uh, 50 and 80, right? 50 and 80, and don't forget a one. So that's a four by one four by one, wait, wait a minute, four by one vector. And our small x is k times, times what? Times r, and also times, oh, forget, don't forget, 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 forget it. So there is a matrix i, right? i is identity matrix. It's a three by three identity matrix, right? And times, which is I and minus C, right? And times capital X. This is, this is small x and also our UV, U is equal to the first element of small x divided by the uh, third one and V is equal to This, the second element of small x divided by the third one, right? Then, uh, wait a minute. All right, so let's try to run it. What happened? No, I always have some issues on the uh, on the MATLAB when I run it. Yes, yes, it works. Great. Uh, but super slow. Okay. All right. Whatever. Uh, I think. Uh, I think there were some issues on my, on my lab, MATLAB. All right, so this is about the um, coding of the projection. So it's quite simple, right? It's quite simple if you use the, the matrix general formulation of the, uh, the general formulation of the, um, uh, of the projection, of the projection, right? So, and the answer is something like this. Hope you have the same answer as well. Then, then, after we know about how to do the projection, then uh, we can come to the uh, visual serving. So for the visual serving, they are, as, as mentioned before, and I also, as uh, Asher mentioned, so there are, mainly, there are mainly two kinds of configurations of the camera. So one is anti-factor anti mounted, so which means 
end factor mounted. Then which means the camera is on the end factor and it can it will move together with the end factor. So that is the end factor mounted. And the other one is the fixed, or we call it global camera mount, global camera configuration. So which means the camera is not on the end factor, it is on a fixed position in the global. And the global camera, the position of the global camera will, all, will not change, but the end factor will change. All right, so that is the second, that is the second configuration of the camera. And if you remember the first, the first configuration of the, uh, uh, of the camera is, uh, is used in the first video in the, in the Georgia Tech one. And the second one, this one is the same as what we have for the second video, which is to use ultrasound to do the, um, to do the visual serving for the insertion of the needle, right? All right, so um, uh, here we only introduced the, um, the traditional, the traditional solution of the video serving for the anti-factor uh, mounted case. But for the other cases, it will be similar. It will be similar. But uh, we only want to introduce uh, introduce the traditional solution of the video serving for the anti factor mounted case. All right. So uh, the basic the basic idea about video serving is is to um, <clears throat> is to use the region based control scheme is to minimize an error to minimize an error, T, uh, error E, which is defined by the S minus S star. Then I will introduce what is S and what is S star and what is S. So, which means the video serving, the basic idea is video serving is to minimize, to minimize an error, to minimize an error. And what is S and what is S star? So the S star, for example, in this case, if I had this, if this is my image and all my designed location of the object, so this is object, right? So my designed location of the object on the image are here with the four points, four features, they are here. But the current, the current location of my object is there. Right, so we want to minimize this difference, this difference, and that is the objective of the video serving. Or, for example, or for example, in this case, in this case, suppose they are not four points, but they are shape. So suppose the the, the blue, the blue edge, the blue edge is the uh, is the desired is the desired that uh, projection of the. Um, of that object, but the current object is projected on the image as shown in green, All right? So we want to make a control, we want to make a control to minimize this error, and also we want to control the camera to make the object, to make the object projected right. like well, the like, one. People on Zoom. Hello? Yep. All right. So any 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 questions? So any questions? You just unmute yourself and ask me. Right. So so, so uh, yep. So um, so the uh, the visual serving is that we have a desired projection of the object on the image, like the the blue one, like the blue one, and and we the current the current projection of the object is like the green one. Right, so we want to control the camera. We want to control the camera. We want to calculate the control of the camera to make the projection, to make the projection of the, the, the object as close as possible, as close as possible to the, to the blue one, which is the desired projection, right? So that is the visual serving. That's the traditional, ob tradition, that is the objective of the traditional solution of the visual serving. All right. So, what are the uh, the E, S, and S star? In here, the S star is the desired are the desired values of the features. Are the desired value of the features? For example, some 
<coughs> something based on the blue one. Or the four red dots, if you remember, in the pre in the previous uh, in the previous um, in the previous image. All right, and the s the s is a function. This s is a function. It's the calculated value of the features. And we and the difference between the calculated one, which is the current calculated one, and the desired one is the error. Is the error e. And M is the measurement from the image. And A is, A is uh, contains some parameters of the camera, for, for example, the focal length and principal point. All right, so have a basic idea about this, and then I will introduce what are those in details. What are those in details, all right? So the basic idea is you have a desired feature, desired value of the feature, for example, the blue, for example, the blue, uh, pr the, the projection on the blue, uh, of the blue one, or for example, these four red dots, that's a desired value of the features. And then from the current ob observation on the image, you can, calculate a you can calculate a calculated value of the features. And you want to minimize them, and that's the error. E and we want to minimize the array. And that's the that's the objective, that's the general objective of the visual serving. And later I'll show you how to solve it, right? Okay, so so if a star is selected, which means if the desired, if the desired value of the features are select, uh, uh, are selected. It, all, it is always selected, so we can manually give it the position, right? So it is selected. Then, then, if we select, if we select the velocity controller, is the the controller that we want to get. So the velocity controller we see, we see here includes is a sixth of a sixth of controller, sixth of uh, velocity, three D uh, velocity. So the first. Three dot three by one. That is the linear velocity, and the, the last three are the um, are the uh, uh, angular velocity. So suppose we choose the velocity controller we see as what we want to get, which means it includes six. It's a six by one vector. Three three elements are the uh, the linear velocity, and three elements are angular velocity, right? And then and then. If we calculate, if we calculate the, the derivative of s the, uh, with respect to time, so which means s dot. If you remember s dot, if you remember the dot, so we we use in the continuous, uh, we use in the 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 the, lin uh, the linear continuous um, um, control, right? So the s dot means if we want to calculate the derivative of s with respect to time, then that is equal to Ls times Vc, right? So if we calculate the derivative of S with respect to time, which is S dot, then that is equal to Ls times Vc, and Vc is what we want to get, all right? And the Ls, the Ls, we call it interaction matrix, or we call it the feature Jacobian. Or we call it the feature Jacobian. Remember that. Then in the next, in the next. So because we get we have s dot is equal to feature Jacobian times camera velocity, right? Then the the we can get the relationship between the error e and we see that is e dot equal to Le times Vc and Le equal to Ls. Can anyone tell me why is that? Because, because S is constant. S is constant, then the derivative of E with respect to time is the same as the derivative of S with respect to time because S is constant. S star is constant, S star is constant, all right? Then until now, we have the relationship between E dot and we see, 
right? E dot is the error, is the error, is, is, the, is the derivative of the error with respect to time. So we have E dot is equal to LE or LS times VC. Then which means, then which means how to solve it? So suppose we, suppose we know what is E dot and what is LE, then we can calculate VC, right? Then we can calculate the control, the control of the camera, right? Right, and let's see, let's see what is E dot and what is LE. All right, so the E dot, so the E dot, for the E dot, E dot is the error changed with respect to time, right? And uh, because we want to do a, uh, we don't want to do a look and uh, a, uh, a look and move control, and we want to make a continuous control at any time step, at any time step with a camera, right? Uh, with a camera image. Then we don't want to directly, we don't want to directly reduce the error to zero. So we, for, for every step, we only want to reduce the error with a percentage. For example, for example, at each time step of the control, we only want to reduce 10%. We only want to reduce 10% of the current error. Then we can make the derivative E, which is E dot is equal to minus 10%, minus 0.1 times E. Right. So if every time we want to reduce only 10% of the error, then we can choose lambda equal to 0.1, 0 0.1. Then the E dot is equal to minus lambda times E. And do remember, we know what is E. We know what is E because E is S minus S star. And from the current measurement, you can get the S. And you can also have the you also define the, the desired feature values of S star, then you have E, every time you have E. And if, we, if you consider, if you consider at any step, you want to reduce 10% of the error, 10% of the error, which means lambda equal to 0 0.1, then you get E dot, then you have E dot already, right? And suppose you have E dot already, and suppose you have L or LE, you have LE then you can solve the camera velocity like this. You know what is E already, and you, lo you know lambda is 0 0.1. And this pseudo inverse of the LE is calculated by here. Now, which means, which means if you know what is LE, then you can calculate this pseudo inverse of LE from this equation, right? And you put it there, you can calculate VC. Right. So there are two important things. One is how to calculate the E, right? And the other is how to calculate this LE. If you have both of them, then you can calculate, you can calculate your camera control, which is VC, right? And in the following, I'm telling you how to calculate E and LE. How to calculate the error E and the Fisher Jacobian LE. All right. Okay, so. Here we gave a very simple case. Suppose we want to. I'm sorry. <clears throat> Suppose in this case we want to control the camera, to move the camera, to make the object projected in the in the desired right four dots. Suppose we are, we can observe the four dots from the object. And we want to control the camera to move a position that the object, the four points out on the object will, pro, will project it on those four lo locations. And we know those four lo locations already, right? We know those four locations already. And the current one, the current projection of the four points are here. Those things, we know them as well, right? We know them as well. All right, and suppose a 3D point is capital X, Y, and Z, and 2D point is small x and y, and the measurement, which are the point location are the U and V, and the intrinsic parameters will be the focal lens, uh, sorry, focal lens F, and the principal point CU and CV. 
all right? Then we can first calculate the 2D point. It's not UV, it's a 2D point. It's, it can be calculated by the capital X divided by capital, capital Z, capital Y divided by capital Z, and also it can be calculated from the, uh, from the UMV. For example, if we have those four desired four points, locations, right? That is in the UV, for example, 100, 100, 100, 500, 500, 500, 500, 100, something like that, right? So those are the UVs. And from those UVs, by using this equation, we can calculate the X star and Y star from the U star and V star, right? And they are fixed. And this X star and Y star will be your S star. All right, that's your S star. Then also, then also, because we know those four measurements of the current projection, right? So we know that we know the current measurement of the four points projections. And then we can also put the UV there. Then we can calculate this XY because we know the principal point, we know the, uh, we know the focal length, then we know this small x, y for those two points, for the, those four points, those current four points. And those x, y's are this s, are this s. Then we know how to calculate s star. They are from, they are, they are using this equation by replacing u and v with those points, right? And we know how to calculate S, which is also using this equation, but replacing U and V by using those image points, the current image points, right? The current, current image points. Then we know how to calculate S star, we know how to calculate S then minus them, then we can get E. It's halfway through, right? It's halfway through, we got E already. And the next thing is we need to calculate L. And after that we calculate L, then we can solve everything. All right, then how to calculate L? Here is the direct, here is the derivative. Um, briefly introduce the derivative, the derivative, but um, uh, you will finally get the equation. All right, so, we want to calculate the derivative of s with respect to t, right? The s is small x and y. And we make this derivative, then we have this. Then we have this, right? And also from the, uh, uh, so from the knowledge that we can know, we can relate it, the, the velocity of the 3D point to the camera's spatial velocity, right? So x dot, the capital X dot, which means the, uh, the, 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 the 3D location of the, uh, the location of 3D point uh, with respect to time is equal to this, is equal to minus, minus linear velocity and minus angular velocity cross product the uh, capital X. Then we have this, then we have this. Then we have the relationship the relationship between x dot, y dot, z dot to the, to the linear velocity and the angular velocity. All right, so do remember this equation, then that is fine. Then what we want to do is, sorry. <clears throat> then what we want to do is, we want to replace the x dot, y dot, and z dot in this equation by using those. Then we don't have x dot, y dot, z dot anymore, right? And after that, we have this equation. We have this equation. And this is the uh, S dot, which means that is the L. That is the L, the Fisher Jacobian. And we can also rewrite this equation into a matrix format. All right, and the L is equal to this. So we want to rewrite this into here. So the L is this, the L is this. 
and you can see here the small x you know that already you know the small x already right you know the small x already small y already you calculated that already before when you calculate s and s star and then the z the only thing we we didn't know is the z the only thing we didn't know is the capital z the capital z is the distance is the distance or the depth from the uh, object to the camera from the object to the camera then we must measure we must measure or estimate or give approximation of the value of z of the z for example in your suppose in your visual serving control if you're using a single camera and mounted on, on the end vector and you need to give a rough distance from that camera to the object and then you can make this control all right so this is l this is l for one point this is l for one point and by solving this you need at least three points and here we give a four points example more than three is fine but you can't solve it with less than less than three points all right and how to deal with it is so this this matrix is for only one point then you put them together you put this together row by row then you can have a complete l so for how many points so each point there are two rows of your final l matrix you put the lx1 here lx2 here ls3 here ls4 here if you have a five point ls5 later then you have a complete lx all right and after you have lx if we come back to uh wait a minute if you come back to here if you have your L, lx or your le which means your l then you can calculate the pseudo inverse of l which is l plus and you have e already right you have e already so you calculate the s star and s minus them together you have e and you know lambda is 10 percent then you know all of them together then you can calculate the vc you can calculate the velocity of the camera all right all right so uh, that is the way to solve it let me go over it again let me go over it again all right so the first thing is you have an image right you have the desired four desired points you have the desired location of the four points on the object which in red you know the uv locations let's say at u star v star and you also know the current locations of the four points on the image let's say to u and v and the first thing is you use this equation by replacing uv as the u star, uh, u star and v star of the right location of the right points then you get your s star you have four points you put them together u1 v1 u2 oh, sorry x1 x2 x1 y1 x2 y2 x3 y3 x4 y4 so that is a column column vector of s star and then you use the same equation which is here by replacing uv by using the current location of the four points in in the blue then you calculate your s you calculate your s then minus them together to minus them then you have your e you have your e that's your first step that's your first step you have your e then the next thing is you need to calculate the feature jacobian right you use this equation to calculate the feature jacobian and the small x and small y you've calculated already you know it already because when you calculate your s and s star you know that small x and small y right you know them already you know them already so the only thing you didn't know is the capital z then you need to give assumption on it for example the roughly distance from the camera to the object on the table is about half a meter then you give 0.5 for z something like that 
all right? Then for one of the points, you have one of this equation, right? And you have four points, you prove them as a matrix. And then that is your L, the feature Jacobian. And after you have feature Jacobian, after you have feature Jacobian L, then you put it into this equation to calculate the pseudo inverse of L, which is L plus, right? And you put L plus to here, and you know what is E, right? You put the calculated E to here as well. Then you know what is lambda. Lambda is supposed to be like 10% or 15% or 5%, something like that. And you know everything in this equation. After solving that, you can calculate the sixth of the sixth of camera velocity. All right, so that's the main, that's the main progress of the uh, video serving. And then I give an example here. So try to practice on that. Try to practice on that. I have a demoed, I have a demoed code. I have a demo code on that. And I think uh, Marlene will, uh, uh, will practice with you as well on activity three. So do make sure you know how to do that, right? I have an activity. So uh, this is the camera information and the pose of the, um, the camera. And also the desired feature UVs are here. And the measurement of UV, current measurement of UV are there. And we assume Z is equal to 50. Then what's the camera velocity, right? And I have a demo code as well. And my MATLAB has horrible at the moment. So I can't run, run it with you. But uh, you can practice on that first. And so we will definitely talk about this activity three in the next lecture. All right, so try to try to know how to solve it and try to know how to <clears throat> how to how to do the video serving and calculate the camera velocity. All right, I have a demo code, try to try to uh, see on that and also combining what uh, I introduced for the solution of the uh, uh, of the video serving and try to try to solve the activity three. All right, and uh, the, the very last part, I want to introduce a little bit on the uh, uh, Hyundai calibration, the Hyundai calibration. If you, um, uh, <clears throat> if you recall, what we, what we talk about is about controlling the camera, controlling the camera, right? We are calculating the, we are calculating the control, which is the linear and angular velocity of the camera but not the end factor, but not the end factor, right? So, but the camera is rigidly mounted on the end factor. If we know the relative pose of the camera, between the camera and the end factor, and that will not change, right? That will not change. Then which means if we do this hand eye calibration to get this relative pose between camera and end factor, then, after we calculate the control, the velocity of the camera, then we can use this relative pose to calculate, to calculate the control of the end factor. Then we can do the control, right? So that is why we introduced this hand eye calibration. That is quite important in the, sorry, that is quite important um, uh, in the hand, uh, in the video serving. All right, then how to calculate it? How to calculate it? So the main, the main purpose of hand calibration, as I mentioned, is to calculate the relative pose between the hand and eye, so which means in the end factor mounted case, we want to calculate the relative pose between the camera and end and, and, and factor because they are rigidly fi fixed together. And then after we, we know this relative pose, and then uh, if we can calculate the control of the camera, then we can transform it into the control of the end factor. Then we can control the robot. Right? So that is hand calibration. Then how to do it? How to do it? It's a very, it's a very simple way, but it is, um, is it is the classic way of doing the hand calibration. Is that? So suppose suppose this is your camera, and this marker is your end factor. All right and the, the camera is here and the end factor is there. And if we use a checkboard, if we use the checkboard here to let the camera to look at that. And if we move, if we move the camera from here 
to there, from here to there. Then <coughs> the location, sorry, the uh, the pose of the end factor can be directly obtained from the forward kinematics. You can read it from the robot. Suppose you have a robot arm, you have a robot arm, then you have an end factor, and the pose of the end factor, you can directly read it in the robot form from the forward kinematics. But the only thing is this pose is in the robot base corner frame. Is in the robot base corner frame. All right. So you can you can get that pose, but that pose is in the robot base corner frame, right? And after it moves from here to here, you can also get the pose of the end factor. You can also get this pose from the end factor. But they both of them they are in the uh, they are in the robot base corner frame. All right. And after because we use this pattern this pattern right we can calculate the extrinsic parameter which is the camera pose with respect to this pattern right at here and after it the camera moves to here we can also calculate the camera pose with respect to with respect to the um uh, to the to the pattern right right so the only thing is the two camera poses, they are in the pattern corner frame. And the two end factors, two end factors, they are in the robot base corner frame. Then what we can do is because the two robot ro uh, end factor poses, they are in the same corner, they are in the same corner frame, which is the robot base corner frame, we can calculate their relative pose, which we called it A, which we called it A. Right, so we can calculate the relative pose between the two end factors, two end factors. All right, and we can also calculate the relative pose between the two cameras because they are in the same pattern corner frame. Then we can calculate the relative, which we call it the B, which we call it the B. All right, so, <clears throat> so, so A represents the relative pose. Or relative transformation between the two end factors, and B is the relative pose between the two cameras. All right, between the two cameras. Then, if we call the relative pose between the end factor and the camera as X, it's also a relative transformation, right? It's a relative pose. If we call the relative pose between the camera and the end factor is the X. Then the X, when the camera moves here to here, the X will never change. The X will never change. And then in this relation, we can see that if we calculate the transformation A times X is equal to transformation X times B, right? So if we want to calculate, if we want to calculate the relative pose, relative pose from this camera, sorry, <coughs> sorry, wait a minute. So if we want to calculate the relative pose from this end effector to this camera, we can do it in two ways, right? One way is from here to here to here, which means it is A times X. And the other way is from here to here to here, then which means X times B. Then in this case, we have a A times X equal to X times, X times B problem, right? So in this case, A and B are the relative pose. So A is the relative pose between the end factors. B is the relative pose between the cameras, and X is the is the Hyundai calibration we want to calculate it. And in this case, we have A X equal to X B, and we know what is A, we know what is B. We only want to solve X, and there are a lot of um, a lot of masses or a lot of um, sorry or a lot of uh, 
Yep, I think I, I saw someone see. Okay, so you can, there are a lot of um, uh, packages, softwares, or toolbox that can solve this problem. All right, so for the highlight calibration, what you need to do is, what you need to do is, what you need to do is, you need to move, you need to use a pattern to get the poses of the camera. And another thing is you need to make the camera or the end factor moves. And you have multiple A, which is the relative pose between the end factors when it moves, and you have multiple B, which are the relative poses of the camera when it moves, right? So you have multiple A's and multiple B's, then you can use AX equal to XB to solve what is X. And that is your end effect. So that is your hand effect. All right, so that is a classic way of doing this hand eye calibration. Then, uh, then that is one case. Then how about the other case? So uh, what I introduced is the end effect mounted case. But if you have a global camera and we put a pattern on the end effect, on the end effect, Right, so if you remember, the, uh, the, uh, there is another one which is using the needle, and then they, they put a, a pattern on the end factor in the first video. So in this case, we need to calculate the relative pose, the relative pose between the, the pattern and end factor. And we also need to calculate the relative pose between the global, between the global camera to the robot base and how to calculate them. They are also hand, hand eye calibration and how to calculate them. That is your homework. Think about that. It will be similar. It will be similar to what we have for the AX equal to XB problem. It will be similar. So try to formulate it as a similar one. So when, the, uh, when you move the, uh, the end vector, and then you will get similar things to here. Then you can solve both of the two. You can solve the red pose between the pattern to the end vector. You can also solve the, uh, the retro pose between the global camera to the uh, uh, global camera to the robot base. All right, so that is homework. Think about how to how to formulate your AX equal to XV problem in this hand eye calibration. In this case, about hand eye calibration. All right, so um, that is all for today, and thanks a lot uh, for joining the uh, sorry for joining the lecture and. Uh, a uh, very last thing is I got a lot of emails about the extension of the guidelines for the code and the videos. For the code, for the code and the videos. Um, uh, I can I can do the extension to the uh, to the next to the next Sunday, which means uh, I can I can give you one week extension on that. The only thing is that is the very last deadline, so we can't move it. Uh, we can't do any further extension on that because, wait a minute, I think there's, yep. So we can't, we can't do too much on that because um, we can't change the date for the presentation day. The, pre the presentation day is the very last lecture. It's on the very last lecture, so I can't change that. And, and because that is a presentation and suppose, it is supposed, I suppose that when you do the presentation, the project is finished, or nearly nearly ninety five percent finished, or the main job is finished. That's why you can do that presentation to show the others the work, right? So, so which means the uh, I can only do the extension for one week, which is um, next Sunday, and which is one or two days before before the presentation day, right? That that's the best thing I can do. All right. So, uh, is this a one week extension for the code and the video, and also again, and also again. The, um, <clears throat> sorry, and also again, the presentation day, I can't change. Uh, sorry, I have another question. Okay, okay, for the code, for the code. I think I mentioned it already uh, uh, in, in some of the video in the, in the lecture, I mentioned that already. All right, so I want the code that I can run it. So that is a very standard, that is a very standard one, very standard one. So if you, if you find the, um, 
sorry, <clears throat> if you find the um, uh, some public variable codes, public variable codes, they always have this kind of things. A small readme, a small readme, which means from the readme, I can install your code, I can run your code. That's a small readme. And better to have a structure about your about your um, about your code, which means some kind of uh, some kind of like a description about your code. So what how many components do you have? So which components is related to what? Something like that. So which means I have a simple readme. So um, so you have a simple readme, which means from the readme I can install and run your code. All right. And uh, and also a description about your code as well, something like that, and the code and complete code. And also, please please do write the description and the readme well, because um, if you have a code you want to read, if you have ROS, if you develop a ROS, and you want the others can use the ROS, the most important thing, the very first thing, is you need to let others know how to install it, how to make it run. Right, and that is quite important. I'm going to run it. I'm going to run all of all of your code. So please write your readme quite well to me. All right, and also the video. The video you can do video in any of the formats you want, but it is better. It is better to include your experiments. So you can consider the video as a demo to me, as a demo of your work to me. You can make any format as you want, but I at least I want to see some demo of your work. All right, so that is the um, uh, that is the uh, the deliverables of the code and the video. All right, so um, uh, if you don't have any questions, and if you have any questions later, just send me an email. But what I mean is for the code and the um, uh, for the for the code and the um, the video, it can have one week extension, and we can't. We can't do do further anymore. So that is the hard deadline for the next uh, for the next for Sunday next week. All right. So any other? There's another one. Uh, so should we do show the progress of the assignment? No, just the final. Okay. So any format is fine. Any format you can show the progress and also together with the uh, uh, with the demo. Or at what I mean is at least I need to see. Some, uh, some demo of your work, but you can make it as any format as you want. You can make it as a very full demonstration about your work and also the experiment, something like that. So it's totally up to you. It's totally up to you. But what I mean is at least you need to include uh, the demo of your work. All right. All right, cool. So uh, this is all for today, and in next lecture, I will give a um, uh, I will give a reflection on the uh, on the quiz two, and also um, I will give an overview, a review of the uh, of the uh, sorry <coughs> of the subject. And the week after next will be our presentation. Will be our presentation day. Okay, so we will do all all of our presentation on that day and also i need all of you to provide the um, uh, to provide the um, the peer review of each of the group and the, uh, the the marks the marks on the presentation will will only depends on the peer review i will give an average of the peer review on the marks all right so you don't have to mark on your own group but you need to mark on all of the, all of the other groups. All right, so, okay, so that is all for today. And let's move to the handout activity with Malin. Thank you very much.